You mean as part of the seal? You gotta approach him. You gotta see if he's I want to see him if he's available. I think it would be a very interesting start. It sure would be. <laughs> okay. Whether whether every whether the guys have the Okay, Michael, do you need to uh what? Okay, Michael, I, do you have check if you need to mute yourself? My son gave a shirt. Yeah. On our, uh, yeah, and uh, Shoel Schneider, and then yeah. Shtika, and what are the halachic differences? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll send you a link. Yeah. How much are they paying now? Okay, listen, everybody, try and bring a couple of singles tomorrow. Because you see, he can't make change. If you're come, if you're coming to that to the here on Tuesday, the bread we're going to be serving breakfast. It's thirteen bucks a person. The money must be in tomorrow morning. So if you show up with a twenty dollar bill, that's a problem. So please get yourself some single. If someone has twenty, I'll give it to Kevin. Avi, Avi, I'll check. Oh, here's the 20. Hey, are you collecting for tomorrow, has she? Yeah. No. Can I give you $13? Yes, you can. Thank you yeah. very much. Thirteen. Tuesday. Let me give you twelve. That's not true. Do <laughs> 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 you have? Do you have some more? Oh, it's not either that or we can do it by phone. No, it's us. We can uh, right. stick around anyway because you give a class or right. something. Yeah. So okay, learning sponsors. Year of learning, friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leah Bracha, Isaac and Evelyn Blacher, in memory of his sister, Chaya Racha Bas Isra. Friends of Leonie Meiserman, Leia Sabra, Baskana Kazunda. A month of learning by B. Pizer, uh, two months of learning by the friends of Milton Meller in honor of his second bar mitzvah. A month of learning by B. Pizer in memory of her sister, Rivka Basabra Michal Halevi. Mendel and David Cheslow in memory of her father, Nehemia Ben Mordechai Yona Halevi. Harry and Mel Haller in memory of her mother, Malka Rachel Bas Yehuda Leib. Yossi Goldstein, in memory of his father, Moshe Tzvi ben Dov. Isaac and Edda Novik, in memory of his mother, Miriam Gittel Bas Chano Chena. A week of learning by Clara and Jonas Wazer, in memory of her father, Moshe ben Yisrael HaKohen. Mira and Herschel Senet, in memory of her mother, Shosha Bas Avram Alevi, and his mother, Reitza Bas Yitzchok Yaakov. Anita and Yoris Kornblit, Leora and Lee Weinberg, in memory of their dear friend and teacher, Rabbi Dr. Ron Bronner, Harav Yerachmiel ben Shmuel Yosef, Oscar and Shelley Moll, in memory of his father, Shlomo ben Yitzchak, and his mother, Rachel Bas Naftali, Judith and Michael Poretsky, in memory of her father, Yaakov Yitzchak ben Hirsch, five. Uh, may Shamas know individual days of learning today, 
Therefore, may Hashem is heaven aliyah, crank lafia, vout the Yeshua Hashem atliyah, and a chobun Israel good kaben shtiyah. Okay, just a reminder, everyone, that again, the Siyum is next Tuesday morning, the 24th, after the Shior. Um, funds go to uh, Heshi. Thir Wednesday, the 25th, uh, we start Gemara Nazir. Okay. All right, so if you don't have a, if you don't have the, uh, a safer, I will check this week. I, uh, he's coming to unlock. I will check this week to see if, uh, how many extra volumes of Nazi we have in the building. <laughs> We'll be able to have, uh, you know, on papers, they don't have to carry through okay. the All right. I'll bring, I'll bring. You make some copies. Uh, Nazir, 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 you'll bring. So okay. All right. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, we finished up, we went over a little bit onto the top of Pevav, but I want to just pick up from the bottom of uh, Pehe, okay? So the Gemara there finished up. Uh, was the argument that the Gemara challenged. How can you say this is the case? She has a commitment, so to speak, to the husband. Once I become divorced. But now, at the present time, she's not divorced. Okay, if that's the case, then why are we dealing with something that's going to be in the future? And since she says that, what about the question of her benefiting? Okay, so we picked up on the top of Pei Vav, Amud Aleph. Okay, Amar Rav Elis is Rav Elu. Umar Elu Omer Lechavero. And what about a situation, says Rav Ela, challenging with the following example? Sadez Zo Sha'ani Mochela. Okay, this property, this field that I sell to you, when I in the future will purchase it from you, takdish will become consecrated. Me lo kitsha, is it not truly consecrated? Therefore, the implication seems to be that you can be makdish things that haven't come into existence yet. Okay? Mat kifla rabbi yermia. Okay, Rabbi Yirmiya challenges and says as follows, me dami, are the two situations really parallel? Are they really the same? This field that I'm going to be selling to you, that is in, that is in existence, it's in your hands, it's in your possession. You know, right now, so it's in your back. possession at this time, exactly. Isha. Regarding the woman, is it even, does she have any future handiwork that she's going to be making? Is it even possible for her to uh, whatsoever uh, consecrate it? Is that the possible? Therefore, the situations are not parallel. It's not the same. So the Gemara says, Okay, let's see, give an alternative explanation, all right? Ella, rather, okay, it's when a person says to his neighbor the following, this field that I sold to you, okay? What? Yeah, this field that I sold to you, right? When I will purchase it, from you, then takdish, then I will make it consecrated. Okay, so in other words, implying that the field that I sold to you, 
In other words, it was in his possession, which changes what was said before. It's not in not No, not now. The only reason it said I sold you was in parallel to the to make it, right? Okay, so what happens? Mikatsha, is it actually consecrated? So the Gemara tells us, Matkifla Rav Papa. Rav Papa challenges this. Midami, even with this example, are you saying that our, that this, this suggested answer is really parallel to our case of the woman? Okay. Gabe zvine psika miltai. Regarding a sale of land, we see that it's what we might call an absolute act. Namely, it's both the field and produce okay, that go. Right? All right. And whereas Gabe Isha, whereas regarding the woman, me psika milta, is this really any sort of complete act? No, she may make some uh some stuff, but, but uh, what's gonna be the future, it's not Yada. Okay, so what happens? Ha lodami. So here too we say that case doesn't apply. It's not a parallel. Ella, let's try again, says the Gemara. Omer lechavero. Maybe it's a situation we can compare it to the following, says the Gemara. Sadezo shemishkantila. This particular field that I pledged to you, or I used it as a mishkanta, as a mortgage. Okay? Right? Lach. When I will redeem it, okay, mimcha. Then when I get to the point that I pay you something else and I get the <laughs> land back, okay, all right, tigdosh. Let it then become consecrated. This is a case where the lender is able to utilize the field while the mortgage remains. Could be milo kidash. Kacha, is it not then, isn't that land consecrated? Right? Another challenge. Mat kifla rav shisha, bere the ravidi. So he challenges that example. Mi dami, can you really say that even this example of the mish, using land as a mishkanta, then redeeming it, okay, and, and making it uh, consecrated, is that really a parallel? Okay. Because there, okay, he may use that land, the land may be given as a mortgage, as a, a, okay, but the question is who is the real owner in that situation, okay? So what happens? Sade biado liftota, okay? The land there is in his ability, I'm going to translate that. To re total ability to pay right, to, right, in his ability, lift ota, to redeem it, right? He takes uh, other monies or other property instead of that particular property. He could sell that or use that and redeem the property that was being used as the mishkanta, as the mortgage, right? Okay. However, isha biyada lehit garesh, but regarding the woman, is it in her power? to be able to divorce herself? Absolutely not, okay? So that's, the, that's his argument that here too, there's no parallel. Ha lo dami. So here again, we see that there is no parallel, okay? So the Gemara tries again. Ela le omer lechavero. But rather, says the Gemara, we say again, the person says to his neighbor, sade zosha meshkanti lach. This field that I'm using as a mortgage for you. Okay. La Esser Shanim. Okay. And I clearly define that it's going to be for 10 years. Okay. Liksha Epandena. When I will redeem it, Mimcha, from you, Tikdosh, let it then be, okay, uh, consecrated. So, in other words, implication being again, looking to the future. Well, he does not have the right to redeem okay. it now. Right. And the implic well, that's why I said he's looking to the future when I redeem it. Okay. So isn't that a closer parallel 
to our example of the woman. Okay, what happens? Me lo kache. Isn't the land then in that situation consecrated? Challenge again. Matkifla Rav Ashi. He challenges him, Rav Ashi. Midami, are they really comparable? Are they really the same? Hatam, Keats, we see with, their, with that example, you have given a clear, specific deadline, a fixed time with regard to that situation. Okay? Isha, mi'idla kitsuta, regarding the woman and her handiwork. Okay, do we say, okay, well, that's true. Right. Okay, but the implication, no, it's not a 10-year matter. Okay, but the clear implication is there is no fixed time. A, we don't know if she's going to produce any more, according to one view, excess. And even that, secondly, we don't know if there's a, so to speak, a, what do you like, they put on items, you know, uh, a date where you can use it by such and such a date. Best used by. Best used by, yeah. She doesn't have a best used by. Uh, <laughs> no expiration date. No expiration date. Thank you, Zeb. She doesn't. There is no expiration date on the chasana. Okay, because that was Rabbi Yochanan Ben Nuri's argument. Okay, why? All right. So what happens here? Ella, so we go over to the next Amr. Ella Amar Rav Ashi. So now notice Rav Ashi, not only does he, did he challenge, but he now comes forward with another possibility. Ella Amar Rav Ashi. Okay, what is his case? Shani Konamo. There is clearly a difference, okay, with regarding oaths when they are attributed to a sacrificial status. Why? dami. Why? Because they have an inherent sanctity. In other words, you could take an animal and you could be makdish, you can consecrate that animal in one of two ways. One way is to say, I makdish that animal as a korban and your intent is clearly that the animal be used on the Mizbeah. Another item might be, I might take an animal and say, I'll makdish that, that animal to the base of Mikdash, but it's going for what we'll call for the moment, Bedek Habayit, or another translation might be material sanctity. In other words, the value of that animal. Okay, but the animal does not have inherent sanctity. It's not going to be used on the Mizbeach. It's simply used by the Kohanim, Levim, whoever as... Uh, okay, so that's his point. So Rav Ashi says that's where there is a difference again between that example and the situation of the woman. Okay? Uch de Rabba, and this is similar to a, a statement made by Rav who says as follows, the Amar Rava, Hekdesh Chametz V'shichur Mafki'in Midei Sha'abu. Says Rava, you have three methods, okay, of removing something from the status of being a lean, okay? One is Hekdesh, one is consecrating the item. The second is Chametz, okay? That if somebody had uh, had uh, made a mortgage with a non-Jew, there's a question there of that. Okay, well, Jew to non. -Jew. Okay, and the third shichrur is if you use a slave as your lien as your mishkan. In that case, and right, and there too, you free the slave. That's the end of his use as a lien as mishkan. Okay. So that's the point. Ihachi, if that's the case, says the Gemara, Lamali Shema Yegar Shema. Why then does our Mishnah say, perhaps, okay, lest he divorce her, Tani instead emend the Mishnah, the language of the Mishnah, and say, Va'od Shema Yegar Shema. 
rather make it that cape rather than Shema, rather make it furthermore, he may uh, divorce me. And in that case, that would conclude that particular item. So did we find a parallel whatsoever? No, we did not. And as a result, then that seemed to indicate that the general rabbinic view was that something that has not come into existence, okay, cannot be maktish, cannot be consecrated. Okay, our new Mishnah. The wife made a vow, but he was under the impression it was his daughter. Okay, second case. The daughter made the vow. By the way, notice that it doesn't give us an age here. So we have to assume. So we have to assume, right? That she's right. We have to assume exactly. That's what I was going to say. That she, we have to assume that she's not more than twelve and a half. Not a banana. She's well. She could be a katana or a nara. Okay, but she's certainly right. second case, right? So nadra bito v'savur shenadra ishto, and he was under the impression that it was his wife who made the vow. Third case, nadra benazir, v'savur shenadra bekorban. Okay, the vow was made regarding Nazareth ship, but he was under the impression that the vow was made similar to a korban style. Nadra bekorban, v'savur shenadra benazir. Or another case, thought that the, that the kind of vow was, so before we had a difference in the person, problem of who the person was, now we have a different kind of question here in this, these two, what kind of neder is it? Okay, right? Nadra b'korban b'savosh nadra b'nazir. Okay. Now we get another, so we've got two different kinds of issues being raised in, so far in these four examples. Sir, yes, Bob. Make false oh, well, hold on, Bob. I'm not, let's go on with the Gemara a little bit. Mission. Okay, and that may be precisely the underlying concept that the commission is trying to get to. Okay, right, right. Let's take another example. Right? So this is third case. Okay? First was person. Second was kind of vow. Now the third case. Right? Nadra b'te'enim. They made a vow regarding figs. V'savor shenadra min ha'anavim. And he was under the impression the vow dealt with grapes. Nadra min ha'anavim. Vow was made with grapes. Or he, he right, Visavorshina Dramin Hataini was under the impression that the vow was made regarding the uh, right, the, the figs. So we have person problem, we have kind of vow problem, and now we have the text or the content of the vow, right? The content, okay. If he already had attempted to make a hafara, it is inadmissible. It is, it is an invalid, and he must go back and make a hafara all over again. Okay? So we have three kinds of cases. The wrong person, okay, well, three, the wrong person, was wife or daughter. Second was the wrong kind of vow. And the third was the wrong content. Okay. Why do we have to write it down? Is it common sense? No. Yes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Come on, this is Gemara. Okay. <laughs> Avi, you might argue that since he did the wrong uh, afara, he gave up his right. 
You're only allowed to be made for once. So you may say, okay, it doesn't count because he did it wrong, but he get, but it's all finished. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to, Michael's right. I'm going to switch his answer a little bit. Avi. Yeah. Okay. Remember, we've said that he must Mayfair, he must revoke the vow when he, within the, when he, he when he hears it and he only has a day to do so. Okay. So what happens then? Okay. If he, he hears, he thinks his wife made it. And later that afternoon, he revokes it. But the next day, he finds out it's his daughter. Okay? So then he only has whatever time is left in that next day to revoke the vow. Because the first day was nothing. He didn't hear about the vow. He didn't hear correctly right. he didn't hear correctly who the maker of the vow was if the girl was second a different person so he made the vow on the wrong person why can't he do it What's the he's got to go back and make it brand new on the correct person. What is a different person? Right. Okay. So that's what the Mishnah Right. Saying. So the Mishnah is wants us to understand. Okay. The Memra does this. This says the Gemara. The Memra does this come to tell us? Okay. Right. Dina Ota Davkahu that it must must be precisely her, okay? In other words, are we only talking that it doesn't work when it's only a person? That's the first question the Gemara is asking, all right? Is that the only time that we'll say that when it's incorrect, that the person has to go back and make it all, all over again? Or are there other situations, okay? So that's where we're being headed quickly on the top of Pezayan. So he goes into now a whole, the Gemara is going to go into a whole discussion once we understand, in a sense, fine, I might accept the argument that when it's the wrong person, okay, he's got to go, that revocation did not work. It doesn't apply. He's got to go back and revoke it all, do a whole new revocation. But you're going to convince me the other situations? Let's, that's where the Gemara is going to pick up and address. I'm collecting money for the CM, $13. Yes. Orally in front of the person who made the vow. Right. Yes. Theoretically, remember we had a mission that said what happens if the husband is paid? All right, what was the result? The problem was it didn't work. He had to do it for it's interesting that, that was what the Gemara was asking. It would appear that in their time that wasn't sufficient. It's a very big problem with Okay. 